My name is Nate from Alti, and today we are here in the Green Mountain State to take a close look at the off-grid system powering this home. The house itself is approximately 1,200 square feet, nestled in the beautiful hills of Rochester, Vermont. Aside from a propane boiler and a backup generator, which is hardly used I might add, the battery-based solar system powers everything else in their home. A full-size fridge and chest freezer, dishwasher, multiple TVs, lights, you name it. The house feels no different than what many would consider a normal, modern home. The house was designed with large southern facing windows, providing loads of natural heat in the winter months, but they also have a mini split unit to provide some cooling in the summer. The homeowners have said that the system even allows them to vacuum twice a day to keep the dog fur to a minimum. You might be saying to yourself, well, that's all fine and dandy, but how big of a system does someone need to live this off-grid life? We're going to take a deep dive into the system makeup to give you an idea of what goes into producing and storing the energy required to run this home. To start, the system is powered by a 10.6 kilowatt PV array. Six strings of three panels are each wired into a Midnight Classic 150 charge controller for a total of 32 panels on this ground mount. Each set of six strings is combined with a Midnight Solar PV6 disconnecting combiner box before running in conduit to the utility room where the rest of the system is located. In addition to the 32 panels on the ground mount, there are another four older 250 watt modules mounted on another building on the property, which once served as a temporary home while the current one was being built. These four legacy modules are fed into their own classic 150 controller and will soon be moved to the roof of the main house for better exposure. Here in the utility room of the house is where we'll find the balance of system components. As I mentioned, there are a total of three Midnight Classic charge controllers, two of which are each being fed by 18 panels from the ground mount, and the third is managing the four 250 watt panels that were used in the original system. The auxiliary port of one of the classics is connected through a relay to a thermostat on the hot water heater so that when the batteries are full, or in their float stage, the hot water heater will turn on to utilize the excess solar production. The inverter breakers and the charge controller input and output breakers are housed in the Flexware 500 DC enclosure as shown. The box also provides a common positive and negative bus to land the charge controller outputs and the battery cables. At the heart of the system is a set of Outback VFXR 3648 inverter chargers. Each inverter is 3600 watts, 48 volt DC and they are stacked in parallel to provide split phase 120 240 volt output for all the loads in the main breaker panel and also allow for AC charging from the backup 8.6 kilowatt 240 volt generator located outside in the shed. All of the AC input, output, and bypass breakers are housed in the Flexware 500 AC enclosure as shown, making for a sleek and compact install. The Outback Mate 3S provides configuration and monitoring capabilities for the system and also allows for auto generator start through a relay when the batteries reach about 52 volts. If you would like to take a closer look at the schematic, feel free to download it from the link in the video description below. The system was first installed with an AGM bank, but that has since been upgraded to the kilovolt hab lithium iron phosphate batteries. The initial bank consisted of four V2 HAB batteries for a total of 30 kilowatt hours, but was expanded to 45 kilowatt hours total by adding two additional V4 HABs a year or so later. Since the batteries are each 48 volts individually and all need to be wired in parallel, the system utilizes a midnight lithium battery combiner box to bring all of the positives and all of the negatives to a common bus bar using equal length one aught cables. From the top of the buses runs a pair of four aught home run cables to get over to the inverter system. And with that, we have reached the end of our top to bottom tour of this wonderful off-grid system. We sincerely hope you've enjoyed this video and encourage you to visit the altestore.com website where we have been making Renewable Doable since 1999.